Natalie from the Commerce Public Library. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these cute little cat toys for our week two craft. If even after watching this video you're still struggling and like you need help figuring out the stitches and your needle keeps doing weird needly things and your thread keeps tangling, I am having a Be Creative on June 17th where you can come in and I can help you one-on-one -on -one complete the project. Whether you have a cat or not, this will teach you some very basic hand sewing techniques, as well as make your kitties very happy or your friends' kitties very happy. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to make one of these, okay? Okay, so in the kit you'll be getting from us for the cat toy, you will have um, pink felt for the inner ear, gray fleece for the outside, for the little mouse's body, needle, thread, and yarn for his tail, and also some stuffing. So before I show you how to make the actual mouse, I'm gonna walk you through the stitch. I'm gonna be sewing this in bright purple thread so you can see everything I'm doing very clearly. Um, first, I'm gonna thread the needle. Instead of just one thread, I'm going to almost double up the thread so it's very secure. So that's through, and then I'm going to match up the ends and tie a knot. I'm going to tie the knot a couple times so it's large enough to where it actually stays and doesn't just slip straight through the fabric. We are using fleece so it doesn't the knot shouldn't slip straight through, but you're going to want your knot pretty big anyway. <clears throat> For both the mouse project and later on in summer reading when you make the whale, the stitch we're going to be using is called a blanket stitch, which is a variation on the whip stitch. Um, if you see, I'm going to enter from the bottom. For whip stitches, you just go around and go around and go around and just keep doing that over and over and over. But the blanket stitch is a bit more complicated. It's just a variation on the whip stitch. So like I was whipping it over and over and over, to do the blanket stitch, I'm gonna enter from underneath. And then I'm not gonna pull this loop all the way. I'm gonna catch it with my needle and then pull it through. See how it catches on top? And then I'm gonna enter from underneath like we were doing with the whip stitch. And before I tighten the sloop, I'm going to catch it with the needle. And then you get those two little ladder things. They're very cute and aesthetically pleasing. And they work really well for this type of project. You want to always make sure you're catching the loop in the direction that you're sewing. You don't want to catch it going this way or it'll change the direction of your stitch. We're going to go underneath and catch the loop in the direction that we are sewing. We have a cute little chain of blanket stitches. That's what we're gonna be doing all the way around the bottom and around this top. And then we're also gonna use them to attach the ears when we get to that point. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off and start cutting out the pattern and cutting them out of our fabric. We'll be back with you soon. So out of the gray, I'm going to cut two of the sides and one of the bottom and two ears. Okay, I have everything cut out. Now, on the pattern that they give you originally, there is two large outer ears and two inner ears, which are slightly smaller. You can either cut out the inner ear pattern as well, or personally, I just cut it out once and did them all out of the same pattern. 
and I'm going to take and cut these a little bit smaller. I'm going to take and cut off the edge, just trim it down a little bit so I can get that smaller bit without it being as exact as it was on the pattern. Okay, now before we sew these onto this, we're going to go in and sew little eyes. They don't have to be like perfect. I highly doubt your cat will care, but if you want it to be aesthetically pleasing, you absolutely can. You can do like a little up down little arrow for an eye. You can make a French knot. You can like try and fill it in and make a circle. Just do whatever eye you want to do. Give your mouse some personality. I'm gonna personally try and do the satin stitch method for an eye, or I'm going to fill in a little circle and go over it a bunch. Using um, normal polyester thread instead of embroidery floss so it isn't super visible. Just make sure if you're gonna do your eyes that you stitch them on and don't use like plastic eyes or another piece of felt or fabric on top. Cause this is originally intended to be a cat toy and if you're wanting to give it to a cat, they're gonna be playing with it and throwing it around and munching on it and licking it. We don't want the eye to come off and be something that they can swallow. So make sure you don't use something like a button. Like it's, it's better to sew it on like just with thread and give the impression of like a dot eye than to accidentally choke your cat. Now to make the knot on the back, I'm gonna loop it with my thread. Use my finger to hold it down while I pull it taut. I'm gonna loop, loop the thread with the needle, hold it down with my finger and yank. I'm gonna do that around two or three times to make sure it stays. And I'm gonna do that again on this side. Okay, so to do this, we're going to take these and put them right sides together, the knots on the outsides, and we're gonna sew along this side with that blanket stitch I showed you earlier. The right sides are already together, so I'm just gonna go underneath with my needle. So the knot will be on the outside, and then I'm gonna loop it back where I came in. and catch it with my finger. I'm gonna catch that loop, catch it with my needle, and pull. I'm gonna go a little bit further, enter from underneath, catch the loop going the direction that I'm sewing, and pull. And then we're gonna do that all the way around. You just wanna make sure that your stitches are even in length and strong enough to hold it together. Cause your caps are gonna be throwing this around and biting on it, licking it, I'm going to do my last little blanket stitch and go over and over with a whip stitch and knot it each time. So I'm just going to do that same stitch I was doing for the blanket in place a couple times to make sure that there's a knot. And then I'm going to cut this thread off. Since we did it right sides together, now we're going to turn this inside out. We'll have a little mouse body. Next, we are going to do the ears. Put this little unstuffed mouse to the side. Going to take these and line them up. Okay. To sew these ears, we're going to align the darts we cut out of the centers and then fold it in half, sandwiching the pink between the bits of gray. Now on the back where we can see the opening and the pink and the gray, we're gonna sew through all of those layers with our blanket stitch. So I'm gonna start at the top, poke through all four layers of fleece with my needle and start sewing. We have our little ear and now we're going to attach this to the sides of the mouse. So I'm going to take the ear I've just sewn, 
just a little bit past the eye. I'm going to keep it folded and I'm going to go back through, stick it to the bottom where my needle will go to the bottom, the inside of the mouse. I'm going to loop this and stitch it through a couple times. It might be a couple hard presses to get your um, needle through because we are going through like five layers of fleece. So I'm going to go through one more time and then I'm going to lock it down and knot it on the inside of the mouse. So my needle is back on the inside and I'm going to create the knot in here. One ear. And then we're going to sew the second ear the same way that we did the first on this side. Okay, ear number two. So I'm going to keep it folded, arrange it on this side. I'm trying to make it match that one. Make sure you fully attach each of the three notches that we sewed earlier. Make sure you attach the whole seam of the ear and not just one okay, little portion. The top part of our mouse is done. Now, before we attach the mouse to the bottom of the mouse, we're gonna need to make his tail. So in your kit, you should have a bit of yarn. Um, to make sure the yarn doesn't unravel while your cat's playing with it, Cut your yarn to where it's long enough for you to tie on both ends. So long enough for a mouse's tail, but long enough so where you can tie it off. So I'm gonna leave about that much to tie, about that much to tie. So I'm gonna cut it around here. Just doing a little loop and pulling it through. Just a basic knot. Now that we have this, we are going to sew it to the bottom layer. We're going to sew it right here. I'm going to hold it here and then I'm going to enter from the top so the knot is on the inside of the mouse. And I'm going to sew this up and down a lot until I feel confident that it's not going to move. Personally, my cats, when I give them these mice, they like to swing it around and throw it across the room by its tail. So you want to make sure that the tail is very firmly attached to it so it doesn't like get pulled apart from the mouse. If it can happen, it probably will happen. top of the bottom of the mouse. When you are getting ready to sew, make sure you line up the mouse's nose and the mouse's booty. When we're starting, we're going to start um, midway through, like leave a gap so you can stuff it on the side of the mouse. So we're going to start on the side of its head. We're just going to do the blanket stitch again all the way around, stopping midway through with the gap so you can stub it. So I've entered from the inside, the knot is on the inside of the fabric, and I'm going to start blanket stitching.
going almost to the tail. You see how I'm running out of thread here? If you do that and you end up in this situation where you don't have enough thread to continue around all the way to where we're gonna stuff it, um, there is a way that you can tie it off and get more thread. Just go from the bottom where we were sewing, go to the inside and make a knot so you can knot this off. make two or three little knots so it stays put. Just gonna grab the tail. Snip that off. And now I'm going to re-thread my needle and get a longer piece of thread so I can continue around the rest of the mouse. I recommend redoing the same like entering back in that same hole that you did before when you were ending the last stitch. So from the outside, it looks continuous. The seam for the back of the mouse should line up with the tail. So trying to keep those together. When we get back to the tail, I'm gonna go up and down a few times on the seam and on the tail to make sure it's locked in and attached to the top of the body. Because that tail is gonna be a huge stress point for this toy. I'm gonna go up and down, back and forth, a whole bunch. Loop the other side of the tail and continue blanket stitching on the other side of the mouse. Okay, so I've sewn all the way around and I'm leaving a little bit of an opening right here so we can stuff in. I'm not gonna tie off the needle, I'm gonna leave it attached while we grab our stuffing and whatever else we wanna put in here. So I have some polyfill stuffing and because I wanna spoil my kitties and make them really happy when they got home, I also grabbed some bells. If your cats respond well to catnip, be like, you're completely welcome if you want to put catnip in here. So I'm gonna start pulling apart the stuffing and aerating it so it gets larger. And stuffing the mouse. Be sure to overstuff at first, because over time the air is gonna leave the stuffing and it's gonna deflate. So over stuff in the beginning, so then after it deflates, it still like has enough stuffing in it. So I'm gonna do some stuffing, then I'm gonna add a bell. I'm gonna add my bells to where they're about in the middle of the little mouse, and then I'm gonna surround them on all sides with the stuffing so that they can, the little metal ones can jingle off of each other, knock into each other a little bit. But I am gonna put stuffing on all sides of it. So if the cat like throws it at a different cat, they aren't gonna get like a bell to the face because the bells are metal and um, that would not be comfortable. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stuffing around the sides. A little bit of stuffing goes a long way and your kit will probably give you way more than you need so just be kind of conscientious as you're putting in your stuffing like you'll still have enough supplies do make sure though if you're going to make another mouse after this that you use fleece the reason that we're using fleece instead of a different type of fabric is because fleece um, has a little bit of stretch it's really soft it doesn't fray and it doesn't, it's a lot more durable than something like felt. When I first started making these mice for my kitties, I was making them out of felt and they wore through the fabric really quickly. Like they were exposing the stuffing and trying to get the catnip out of the inside. So definitely use fleece for a project like this. It, it'll go a long way in protecting your kitties and making sure your toy lasts through very hectic, violent kitty play sessions. Okay, now that I have it stuffed, I'm going to pinch this whole close. I'm gonna stuff, push the stuffing in a bit so I can pinch this close, and then I'm gonna sew the rest of the gap. Now that I'm back on the stitch where I first started sewing this, I'm going to go over it a couple times and make sure it's well knotted. Make sure you do this really tight so nothing comes loose. 
I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to make a knot like this. And instead of cutting the knot, like cutting my thread off here and having a little bit of thread dangle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove my needle back into the mouse, pierce it through all the way as far as I can get it and squish the mouse. And I'm going to pull it through. So the thread is all the way over here and then I'm going to squish it and pull it and then I'm going to cut off the thread all the way over here. So the loose thread from the knot gets lost inside the stuffing on the inside of the mouse. Okay, here we go. We have a mouse toy. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed watching me make the little mice for the craft. So, um, definitely send me pictures of your finished projects, whether you have a cat or not. It is a very nice sewing project and you can either gift it to a friend or consider donating it to your local animal shelter. So yes, thank you.